A very good evening aspirants, I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy. Aspirants, those who have not subscribed our YouTube channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our controversy videos. Now before getting into discussion, I have an important announcement to you. The announcement is regarding prelims test series. Batch 4 of Shankar Ayes Academy's prelims test series is about to begin. The orientation for the first test is already concluded. But the first test is going to happen on tomorrow, that is on 16th December. A total of 40 tests including MARC and CSAT will be provided in the test series. So go and register to the test series immediately and boost your prelim score. Now with this announcement, let us get into the daily news analysis. Today I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 15th of December 2023. Displayed here is a list of topics that we will be discussing today. At the end of the video, we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So try to watch the entire video. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this news article. Yesterday, the World Health Organization issued a warning regarding e-cigarettes. It said that the tobacco use amongst the population is not being effectively reduced by the use of e-cigarettes. Instead, the e-cigarettes with nicotine content are highly addictive and harming the health of the population. So this is what the warning issued by the World Health Organization says. And this is the crux of the news article given here. Now in this context, let us understand about e-cigarettes. See the electronic cigarette, which is in short called as e-cigarette, is a gadget that mimics smoking tobacco. The components of e-cigarette include a mouthpiece, a cartridge, a heating element or atomizer, a microprocessor, a battery and some of them have an LED light on the end. Now let us briefly look at the functions of these components in the e-cigarette. See once the e-cigarette is on, the power source from the battery is converted into heat energy. This heat energy is fed into the heating component or the automizer. The automizer evaporates the liquid solution present inside the cartridge into a fine mist of vapor and air and this creates smoke which is inhaled using the mouthpiece. In between there is an airflow sensor that detects when you suck in air from the mouthpiece. Once the air is sucked into the device, the sensor alerts the microprocessor to start the heating element that turns the liquid solution into vapor. Okay, This is how the e-cigarettes work. See there are many different types of e-cigarettes in use. The most common types include electronic nicotine delivery systems and electronic non-nicotine delivery systems. Now coming to the difference, see if the solution in the cartridge of the e-cigarette is filled with nicotine, it is known as electronic nicotine delivery systems. And if the solution is filled with nicotine flavored additives, then it is known as electronic non-nicotine delivery systems. Okay. Now let us see some points about nicotine and its harmful effects. See nicotine is an alkaloid that is found in certain plants like the nicotiana tabacum that is used to produce tobacco products. Within the tobacco plant nicotine is synthesized in the roots and accumulates in the leaves. Okay. One of the issues with the nicotine is that it reaches the brain within the seconds of taking a puff. In the brain nicotine increases the release of brain chemicals called neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters are responsible for regulating mood and behavior of the human. The nicotine increases the release of one of the neurotransmitters called dopamine. The dopamine is released in the reward center of the brain and causes feelings of pleasure and improved mood. So the more you smoke, the more nicotine reaches your brain and makes you feel good. As e-cigarettes contain the nicotine, it quickly becomes part of our daily routine and intertwined with your habits and feelings. Apart from this, nicotine can also increase the blood pressure, heart rate and flow of blood to the heart. It also leads to narrowing of the arteries and hardening of the arterial walls. This symptom may lead to heart attack. So the e-cigarette with nicotine is highly addictive and can cause serious health problems in humans. Okay, Because of this huge harm only, the World Health Organization recently released the warning against e-cigarettes. Okay, and that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about 
the working of e-cigarettes then we saw about the harmful effects of nicotine present in the e-cigarette now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article recently the european union has decided to open accession negotiations with ukraine and moldova this means that the negotiations are going to happen in order to induct ukraine and moldova to the european union this decision was announced at a summit of the leaders of the 27 european union countries in responding to this development the ukrainian president zelensky called it as a victory for ukraine a victory for all of europe okay this is all about the news article given here now in this discussion let us see about european union from pullum's perspective first let us see the basics about the european union and the history of its formation the european union is basically a politico economic union it consists of 27 member states which are located primarily in the european continent the european union was established by the maastricht treaty the main goal of the european union is to promote cooperation and integration among its member states this in turn helps to enhance the economic and political stability of europe okay now let us see the history of formation of the european union after the world war 2 and its losses the european leaders understood the importance of intergovernmental cooperation to maintain peace and stability in the european region so they decided to create a common forum or union among the european nations as a result in 1952 the european coal and steel community was founded under the treaty of paris 1951 it was founded by six european countries which are famously called six through this european coal and steel community the six countries aimed to place their coal and steel production in a common market later in 1957 the countries created the european economic community under the treaty of rome 1957 this community was aimed to bring economic integration including a common market and customs union subsequently the countries are created open borders among the members without passport controls through the schengen agreement 1985 at last in 1992 the maastricht treaty or the treaty on european union was signed between some of the european countries this treaty was aimed at improving the european integration and it led to the creation of the european union this maastricht treaty created European Union citizenship a common foreign and security policy and single european currency called euro okay so this is how the european union came into existence now let us see the members of the european union currently the european union consists of 27 member countries here note that the croatia was the last country to join the european union in 2013 then united kingdom was the last country to leave the european union in 2016 the people of the united kingdom voted in a referendum to leave the european union as a result the united kingdom left the european union at the end of 31st january 2020 okay this is all about the members now let us see some points about how a country is admitted into the european union See if a country wants to join the European Union then it should submit its membership application to the European Council then the European Council asks the European Commission to assess the ability of the applicant based on the European Commission's opinion the European Council then decides on the negotiation mandate after fruitful negotiations an applicant country could be admitted into the European Union okay this is how a country is admitted into the European Union here i have listed the 27 member countries of the european union you can have a look at it now finally let us see the organizational structure of the european union see there are four principal organs present in the european union's administration they are european council european commission european parliament and council of the european union now let us see in brief about them one by one now first let us take european council the european council consists of heads of state or governments of member states its main function is to give political direction to the european union okay the second organ is the european commission the european commission is the executive branch of the european union 
now thirdly let us see about the european parliament the european parliament is a legislative body of the european union here note that the members of the european parliament are elected based on proportional representation now finally let us see about the council of european union the council of european union is the main decision making body of the european union it is responsible for adopting various legislations and coordinating the policies of the european union okay this is all about the organizational structure of the european union and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the history of formation of the european union then we saw about the membership of the european union and finally we saw some points regarding the organizational structure of the european union so this topic is very much important for your prelims exam so revise all the facts that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this editorial article this article speaks about the first global stock take that was recently adopted at the cop28 held in dubai the global stock take examines how much progress did the world countries make in curbing global warming the global stock take was happened for the first time since the adoption of paris agreement in 2015 the author of this article also highlights the concerns surrounding the cop28 final draft and this is the crux of the editorial given here now in this discussion we will look at the highlights of the recently adopted first global stock take we will understand these points using our mains answer writing approach now first let us see the question the question is recently the world countries have adopted the first global stock take at the cop28 of the un of triple c in this slide discuss the highlights of global stock take report 250 words 15 marks see this question can be asked in general studies paper 2 under the syllabus topic of important international institutions agencies and fora their structure mandate it can also be asked in general studies paper 3 under the syllabus topic of conservation environmental pollution and degradation environmental impact assessment okay this is the syllabus now coming back to the question see this is a very straight forward question in the intro we can write about what is global stock take and why it is important and in the body part we have to write the highlights of global stock take now let us straight away get into the introduction since the question is about global stock take we can give a brief definition about the global stock take now let us see what is global stock take the global stock take is a periodic review mechanism established under the paris agreement 2015 the stock take takes place every 5 years the first ever global stock take was adopted at the recently held 2023 united nations climate change conference that is at the cop28 now come to the definition the global stock take is nothing but an assessment of climate change action carried out by the world countries basically the global stock take evaluates the progress made on climate action at the global level by doing this the global stock take helps the world countries to identify overall gaps in achieving the paris agreement goal apart from this it will also provide opportunities to bridge the gaps in achieving the goal okay so this way you can write the introduction for the question now moving on to the main body of the answer here we have to list out the highlights of the global stock take now we'll see the highlights of global stock take report Firstly the global stock take says that the world is not on track to achieve Paris agreement targets the global stock take validates this concerns by highlighting the united nations emission gap report that was released recently see the 2022 united nations emission gap report states that 23 billion tons of carbon dioxide are required to be cut in order to keep the global emissions in line with paris agreements but the global stock take noted that even if we fully implement the current pledges made by countries it would only cut 223 billion tons only so this will leave an emission gap of around 20 billion tons so by citing the data from united nations emission gap report the global stock take says that the world is not on track to achieve the paris agreement target of limiting the global temperature by 2 degree celsius by the end of this century Secondly the global stock take mentions that the rapid change from fossil fuel to cleaner energy 
could be disruptive. This is because the rapid change will affect the MSMEs that rely mostly on fossil fuel based commitments. So the global stock take advocates the countries to ensure that the energy transition should be equitable and inclusive. Okay, this is the second findings. Thirdly, the global stock take highlight the need for scaling up renewable energy. It says that renewable energy has to be scaled up to meet the Paris Agreement goal in a time bound manner. Apart from this, the global stock take also says that all harmful fossil fuels have to be rapidly eliminated. Okay. Fourthly, the global stock take noted that most of the climate action efforts were fragmented and unequally distributed across regions. So it advocates that countries should adopt transparent reporting on climate action efforts. This could enhance understanding between the countries and also facilitates international cooperation. Fifthly, the global stock take says that severe heat waves, droughts, forest fires, floods and extreme rain are already being witnessed more frequently across the world. And there is also irreversible melting of polar and glacial ice and sea level rise. Okay, this is another finding. And finally, the global stock take said that the access to climate finance in developing countries needed to be enhanced. This will help the developing countries to meet a goal of low greenhouse gas emissions and facilitates climate resilient development. Okay, so these are all some of the important highlights of the recently adopted global stock take. Now having completed the body part, let us move on to the conclusion. In the conclusion part, we can give a way forward. The conclusion can be like the responsibility to limit the greenhouse gas emissions lies with each and every countries. It is crucial to make progress on all fronts, particularly in terms of climate adaptation. Therefore, to effectively address climate change and limit global warming target, it is crucial to align policies with the best available scientific evidence. Okay, so this way you can conclude a question by giving a way forward. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, through the mains answer rating approach, we saw the highlights of the recently adopted global stock tech report. Okay. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. According to the news article, the farming community who were engaged in Telangana election process has returned back to the cultivation of Rabi crops. The people of Telangana are also making preparations to harvest paddy and a few other crops that were raised in the Karif season. Okay, this is the crux of the news article given here. Now in this context, let us quickly go through cropping seasons in India. See, India has three cropping seasons namely Rabi, Karif and Zaid. Now we shall see them one by one. First, let us take Rabi cropping season. See, the Rabi crops are sown in winter that is from October to December and they are harvested in summer that is from April to June. Some of the important Rabi crops include wheat, barley, peas, gram and mustard. Okay. Here you might have a doubt. How Rabi crops are grown in winter during the absence of monsoon? See actually during winter months the western disturbances coming from the Mediterranean Sea brings precipitation to some parts of the north and northwestern parts of India. This is why the states like Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh cultivate more number of Rabi crops. Okay. Apart from this, the success of the Green Revolution in Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan are also an important factor in the growth of the Rabi crops in north parts of India. Okay. This is all about Rabi cropping season. Now secondly, let us see about Karif cropping season. See the Karif crops are sown with the onset of monsoon in different parts of the country and the crops are harvested in September to October. Some of the important crops grown during the Karif season include paddy, maize, jowar, bajra, tur, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut and soya bean. Among the Karif crops, rice is grown extensively across the country. Some of the most important rice growing seasons are Assam, West Bengal, coastal regions of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, 
கேரளா கொன்கன் கோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் மகாராஷ்டிரா உத்தரப்பிரதேஷ் அண்ட் பீகார் ஓகே திஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் காரிஃப் கிராப்பிங் சீசன் நோ ஃபைனல் அட் சி அபவுட் த ஜெய்ட் கிராப்பிங் சீசன் சி இன் பிட்வீன் த ராபி அண்ட் த காரிஃப் சீசன்ஸ் தேர் இஸ் ஷார்ட் சீசன் டூரிங் த சம்மர் மந்த்ஸ் விச் இஸ் நோன் ஆஸ் த ஜெய்ட் சீசன் சம் ஆஃப் த கிராப்ஸ் ப்ரொடியூஸ்டு டூரிங் சைடு சீசன் இன்க்ளூட் வாட்டர் மெலான் மஸ்க் மெலான் குக்கும்பர் எக்ஸெட்ரா ஓகே திஸ் இஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் சைட் கிராப்பிங் சீசன் அண்ட் தட்ஸ் ஆல் ரிகார்டிங் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் இன் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் விஸ் ஆ த்ரீ கிராப்பிங் சீசன்ஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா தட் இஸ் ராபி காரிஃப் அண்ட் ஜெய்ட் கைண்ட்லி ரிமெம்பர் ஆல் த கிராப்ஸ் க்ரோன் டூரிங் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கிராப்பிங் சீசன்ஸ் திஸ் மைட் பி ஆஸ்க்ட் இன் ஏ ப்ரில்லம்ஸ் கொஷின் நான் வித் தீஸ் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் இன் மைண்ட் லெட் அஸ் மூவ் ஆன் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிக்கல் டிஸ்கஷன் லுக் அட் திஸ் நியூஸ் ஆர்டிக்கல் ரீசெண்ட்லி த இந்திரா காந்தி ப்ரைஸ் ஃபார் பீஸ் டிசார்மெண்ட் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஃபார் த இயர் டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி த்ரீ ஹேஸ் பின் அனௌன்ஸ்ட் இட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி அவார்டட் டு டூ பர்சன்ஸ் இன்க்ளூடிங் கிளாசிக்கல் பியானிஸ்ட் டேனியல் பேரன் போம் அண்ட் எ பீஸ் ஆக்டிவிஸ்ட் அலி அபு அவார்ட் தே ஆர் ரெகனைஸ்ட் ஃபார் தேர் ஒர்க் இன் யூனிட்டிங் யங் பீப்புள் அண்ட் கம்யூனிட்டிஸ் ஃப்ரம் இஸ்ரேல் அண்ட் த அராப் வேர்ல்ட் தே ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் ஃபைண்டிங் பீஸ்ஃபுல் வேஸ் டு சால்வ் த இஸ்ரேல் பேலஸ்தீன் கான்ஃப்ளிக்ட் ஓகே ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் வை தே ஆர் கோயிங் டு பி அவார்டட் வித் இந்திரா காந்தி ப்ரைஸ் ஃபார் பீஸ் டிசார்மெண்ட் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் த கிரக்ஸ் ஆஃப் த நியூஸ் ஆர்டிகல் கிவன் ஹியர் நவ் இன் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் லெட் அஸ் லேர்ன் சம் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் அபவுட் த ப்ரைஸ் த இந்திரா காந்தி ப்ரைஸ் ஃபார் பீஸ் டிசார்மெண்ட் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் வாஸ் கிரியேட்டட் இன் த மெமரி ஆஃப் த ஃபார்மர் பிரைம் மினிஸ்டர் இந்திரா காந்தி இட் இஸ் இன்ஸ்டியூட்டட் பை அ ட்ரஸ்ட் கால்ட் இந்திரா காந்தி மெமோரியல் ட்ரஸ்ட் த ப்ரைஸ் கன்சிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் எ மானிட்ரி அவார்ட் ஆஃப் ருபீஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் லேக் அலாங் வித் ஏ சிட்டேஷன் த ப்ரைஸ் இஸ் கிவன் ஆனுவலி ஆன் நவம்பர் நைன்டீன் விச் இஸ் த பர்த் ஆனிவர்சரி ஆஃப் இந்திரா காந்தி நோ வாட் இஸ் த பர்பஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் ப்ரைஸ் இந்திரா காந்தி ப்ரைஸ் இஸ் அவார்டட் டு இண்டிவிஜுவல்ஸ் ஆர் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் டு ஹானர் தேர் எஃபோர்ட்ஸ் இன் ப்ரமோட்டிங் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் பீஸ் டெவலப்மெண்ட் அண்ட் ஏ நியூ இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் எக்கனாமிக் ஆர்டர் இட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ கிவன் டு சயின்டிஃபிக் டிஸ்கவரிஸ் தட் ஆர் யூஸ்டு டு இம்ப்ரூவ் த ஸ்கோப் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரீடம் அண்ட் டு கிரியேட் எ பெட்டர் ஹியூமனிட்டி நோ வாட் இஸ் தி எலிஜிபிலிட்டி ஃபார் த ப்ரைஸ் த இந்திரா காந்தி ப்ரைஸ் இஸ் ஓப்பன் டு இண்டிவிஜுவல்ஸ் ஆர் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் எனி கண்ட்ரி ஹூ ஹவ் மேட் சிக்னிஃபிகன்ட் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன்ஸ் டு த ஃபாலோயிங் ஏரியாஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஏரியா இன்க்ளூட் ப்ரமோட்டிங் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் பீஸ் அண்ட் கோஆப்ரேஷன் ரிசால்விங் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் கான்ஃப்ளிக்ட்ஸ் த்ரூ பீஸ்ஃபுல் மீன்ஸ் அண்ட் ப்ரிவென்டிங் த யூஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபோர்ஸ் திஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஏரியா த செகண்ட் ஏரியா இன்க்ளூட் ப்ரமோட்டிங் நியூக்ளியர் டிசார்மெண்ட் and non proliferation reducing conventional arms and preventing the use of weapons of mass destruction then the third area include promoting sustainable economic and social development poverty reduction and environmental protection and the final area include advocating for a just and equitable economic order that benefits all nations so if the individuals or organizations from any country who have made significant contributions to these four areas then they may be awarded with indira gandhi prize okay now moving on to say about the selection process see the nominations for the indira gandhi prize are acquired from a wide range of sources including governments international organizations non governmental organizations and individuals a committee of eminent personalities including the previous recipients of the prize and selects the award recipient okay note that last year indira gandhi prize was jointly awarded to the indian medical association and the trained nurses association of india okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is about the various aspects of indira gandhi prize for peace disarmament and development now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article yesterday a team of officials from the bureau of indian standards that is the bis seized packaged drinking water in madavaram chennai during the raid the officials found that the packaged drinking water was with forged isi mark that is why they seized the packaged drinking water this is the crux of the news article given here now in this context let us understand some important points about the bureau of indian standards the bureau of indian standards which is shortly called as bis is the National Standard Body of India it was established on April 1 1986 under the Bureau of Indian Standards Act 
as it was established under the parliamentary act it is a statutory body here note that this bas act 1986 was replaced with the bas act 2016 so currently the bureau of indian standards is governed by the bas act 2016 now talking about the roles of bas the bas is primarily responsible for the standardization activities in india it plays a crucial role in formulating standards for products to ensure quality and safety see before the creation of bas in 1986 the erstwhile indian standards institution did all these functions however in 1986 all the functions of the erstwhile indian standards institution that is the isi were transferred to the bas okay the bas is functioning under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution the bas has its headquarters at new delhi it also has five regional offices at kolkata chennai mumbai chandigarh and delhi okay now let us see the important functions performed by the bas firstly the bas is involved in the activities of standardization marking and quality certification of goods it provides standardization and certification of goods articles processes systems and services secondly the bas is involved in the formulation of indian standards these standards help the industries in upgrading the quality of their goods and services the standards also helps in promoting the standardization of goods and services present inside our economy okay so these are all some of the important functions performed by the bas some of the other functions of the bas are displayed here you can go through it now finally let us see the benefits offered by the bas firstly the bas helps to ensure that the people are provided with safe reliable and quality goods by doing this the bas minimizes health hazards to the consumers secondly the bas helps in promoting the export of quality goods and it is also involved in promoting substitutes to the imports finally the bas keeps a control over proliferation of varieties through standardization certification and testing okay so these are all the benefits offered by the bas and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the formation of the bas then we saw about the functions performed by the bas and finally let us see the benefits offered by the bas now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions as friends today we are having four questions i will solve four of them and one will be a quiz question for you look at the first question this question is regarding indira gandhi price here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement the price is awarded annually by the government of india in honor of the former indian prime minister indira gandhi see this statement is incorrect the award is given by indira gandhi memorial trust in honor of indira gandhi's vision and legacy and not given by the indian government now come to the second statement it recognizes individuals or organizations for their exceptional contributions to global peace disarmament or development see this statement is correct indira gandhi prize is awarded for contributions in these fields now come to the third statement the first recipient of this award was nelson mandela for his remarkable efforts in reconciliation and nation building in south africa see this statement is incorrect the inaugural award was given to julius k nairari who was the former president of tanzania and not given to nelson mandela here only one statement is correct so the correct answer for the question is option a only one moving on let's take up the second question this question is regarding e cigarettes here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct e cigarettes are handy battery powered devices that emit doses of vaporized caffeine see this statement is wrong c e cigarettes are handy battery powered devices but they emit doses of vaporized nicotine and not caffeine now come to the second statement unlike regular cigarette e cigarettes do not produce smoke see this statement is correct e cigarettes have a heating element that atomizes a liquid solution known as e liquid so unlike regular cigarette e cigarettes do not produce smoke but it produce an aerosol which is inaccurately referred to as vapor so second statement is correct now come to the third statement liquid solution used in e cigarettes 
contains propylene glycol and glycerin. This statement is correct. The main ingredients in the e-liquid usually are propylene glycol, glycerin, nicotine and some flavoring substances. However, there are liquids sold without propylene glycol, nicotine or flavors. But mostly the liquid solution contains 95% propylene glycol and glycerin. Propylene glycol and glycerin are used to produce the vapor while the flavoring provides the taste and aroma. So third statement is correct. Here only two statements are correct. So the correct answer for the question is option B only two. Moving on let's take up the third question. Here three statements are given we have to find how many of the statements are correct. Now look at the fourth statement. The car if season starts with the onset of the southwest monsoon. See this statement is correct. The car if crops are sown with the onset of southwest monsoon. Now coming to the second statement. Rabi crops are sown in the winter season mainly from October to March. This statement is also correct. Now coming to the third statement. Zaid crops are typically grown between Rabi and Karif seasons. This statement is also correct. Here all the given statements are correct. So the correct answer for the question is option C all three. Moving on let's take up the final question. Here two statements are given. We have to find which of the statements are correct. Look at the fourth statement. The standard mark of Bureau of Indian Standards is mandatory for automotive tires and tubes. See this statement is correct. The standard mark of Bureau of Indian Standards is compulsory for certain types of electronics and IT goods, cement household, electrical products, food products, steel materials and all types of automotive tires and tubes. So statement 1 is correct. Now coming to the second statement. The FPO mark is a mandatory certification mark for all processed and packaged fruits in India. See this statement is also correct. FPO stands for fruit products order. The FPO mark is a mandatory certification mark for all processed and packaged fruits in India. It is issued by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. Here both the two statements are correct. So the correct answer for the question is option C both 1 and 2. Displayed here is a quiz question for you today. I will post this quiz question in your community section. Try to answer it. With this we have come to the end of the video. If you found our video to be useful do like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Shankaraya's academy youtube channel thank you for listening